Now we look at the classes of fine and plating helmet. And class number one is tuba relia. Tuba relia. Still, this class has another. This fine arm has another class called class estoda and class trima toda. Trima toda. Trima toda. So well, let's begin with the tuba relians. And we say the examples of tuberarians are the plumerians. The plumerians. And most of the characteristics and organs we've seen are gotten from this. That is why there is a debate whether members of phylum pet helmet are a monophyletic grouping or a paraphyletic grouping. But here we have plumerians. Then these planarians, we say they have a ciliated body that is number one they have a ciliated body yes they have a ciliated body then they undergo a specific process called hypodermic impregnation hypodermic impregnation hypodermic impregnation so under hypodermic impregnation we say these organisms are more no we shall say so if I have this organism and I have this organism, these two will fuse, will fuse together and we shall have exchange of gametes from organism one and organism two. They will fuse together and we shall have exchange of gametes. Exchange of gametes and this gum, they are usually sperms. Then these sperms shall shall swim until when they make it to the parenchyma cells the parenchyma cells parenchyma cells because these parenchyma cells are the ones that house the eggs so these sperms shall swim until when they make it to the parenchyma cells when they reach there then we shall have their fusion however this this where we have our gametes getting excreted is what we call a stylet okay eh? so these organs have a modified penis called a stylet. So we say the release of sperms via the stylet which will swim to the parenchyma cells. From the parenchyma cells we shall have fusion. When there is fusion there will be development of a larvae and that larvae is called the mullerian larvae. The mullerian larvae. So this mullerian larvae is also ciliated. It is ciliated on top of that, it has leg-like structures. It has leg-like structures. Leg-like structures. But as the organism continues growing, all these features are lost except for the cilia. Still, under these, these organisms have the power to regenerate. Regenerate and they undergo fusion. Fusion. So I'm assuming I have my organism, this one. This organism can be split into two. I develop this, I get this one, and I get this one. So this is part one and this is part two. So part one shall regenerate and form a fully grown organism. And also part two shall regenerate and form a fully grown organism. In fact, there is research that is being carried on by scientists to find out which cells do these organisms Possess that enable them to do that, and they are planning to use it in further science. So, these members of class Tuberella are divided into two. They are what they call the Polycladida, the Polycladida, and Tricladida. Tricladida. So, we say these organisms have a high branched gut. So, these ones have many gut. Divisions have many guards. Divisions and these ones have three guard divisions. So that is the major difference among these two members of Polycladida and Tricladida. So next class is class Monogenia. These Monogenians are ectoparasites. Ectoparasites. Then they are found in just aquatic animals, they are very rare to be found in human beings or terrestrial animals, they are found in fish, 
amphibians, avians, in turtles, and sometimes even the hippos. Hippos. Then these ones have a modified structure called the opisthapter. Opisthapter. Which opisthapter is meant for firm attachment? Firm attachment to the organs of the host. To the organs of the host. So that is it for class monogenia. Important note the ectoparasites found in these animals and have a modified structure called the opisthapter, which comes from the prothapter and its response for, att for attachment to the organs of the host. Next is class Cestoda. Class Cestoda. This class Cestoda has what the, the common organisms known as the tepuans. The tapeworm. If I try to draw the, the ultra structure of the tapeworm, looks like this. So it has what we call suckers. These are suckers. Suckers. And these are hooks. Hooks. Then these are suckers. Suckers, then it has what you call the proglottids. 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 So, this is just, just a simple structure of the tapeworm. When you are to look at the characteristics of a tapeworm, it is an endoparasite, that means it is found within the body of the host. An endoparasite. Number two, it has more than one host. More than one host. Then it has a sensation tegument, sensation tegument, a sensation tegument. Then it, its body is made up of a scolex, and this scolex, this is the scolex, this is the scolex. But when you read some text, this scolex will be called a hold fast, a hold fast. Then still, its body is made up of what you call the proglottids, 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 and there are three types of proglottids. Number one, you have what they call the immature proglottids. Immature proglottids. Number two, you have what they call the mature proglottids, and number three, you have what they call the gravid proglottids. The major function of these proglottids is that they have sexual organs. They have sexual organs. So, these immature proglottids, they contain sexual organs that are not yet fully developed. Then the mature proglottids contain sexual organs that are fully developed. In fact, it is these ones that will undergo fertilization by a process, a process called double back. Then the gravid proglottids are the ones that now will contain the shelled embryos. Then, let us look at the life cycle of a tapeworm. The life cycle of a tapeworm. Life cycle of a tapeworm. So, but before you venture into the life cycle, we've been talking of more than one host. There are two types of hosts. Number one, you have what they call the primary host. Primary host. Number two, you have what they call the intermediate host. Intermediate host. Intermediate host. So, a primary host is a host where an organism reproduces sexually. Reproduces sexually and also releases its eggs from. Then, an intermediate host is where an organism reproduces a sexually. A Sexually and increases its population and increases its population. Increases its population. So those are the two types of hosts. Primary hosts for most of these parasites, as you are going to be seeing, they are usually vertebrates. Then intermediate hosts are usually molluscan hosts, 
or some other host like fish as you are going to be seeing. But very important to note, classes Toda and the other class that we are going to see which is Trema. Toda, Trema, Toda belong to a subclass called Digenia, Digenia, Da, Genia, Da, Genia. And this Digenia has organisms that have more than two hosts. More than two hosts. And one of those hosts is supposed to be a vertebrate, and the other is supposed to be a molluscan host. Okay, let's go back to the life cycle of uh, tape one. Life cycle of uh, tape one. So, for a tape one, begins by passing out of, we are going to begin by man. If one, if, and if man passes out his or her eggs, especially here, grass, definitely. Eggs, the eggs are passed out in feces, in feces or in fecal matter. So these eggs shall, if they are passed in only areas that contain grass. So as a cow, let's use a cow as an example, is feeding these eggs, these eggs shall also be eaten. And when they reach inside the cow, they shall hatch. They shall hatch. To form another to form a type of larvae called the oncospore larvae, oncospore larvae, oncospore larvae, or what you call the bladder worms, the bladder worms, the oncospore larvae, what you call the bladder worms. So these oncospore larvae or bladder worms shall swim and go and elevate themselves in the intestinal walls, intestinal walls of a cow. The sign walls of a cow. So within the cow, they shall develop to form an inverted scolex and inverted C colex. So this is an inverted scolex, but when it is tilted, we say it is an inverted scolex. So when these eggs reach their height, they shall form an oncosphere larvae with an inverted scolex. Then when there is eating of half cooked beef, half cooked beef, or pork, or pork, this oncospore larvae shall also be swallowed. In. From here, they shall swim and even when they make it to the digestive system, specifically in the small intestines. So then this inverted scolex shall be inverted, shall be in. But it shall be put straight as you see this one. Then it shall develop suckers, suckers, and hooks, suckers and hooks, suckers and hooks for attachment. On top of that, it shall start manufacturing what you call pro glottids. Pro glottids. Then these pro glottids shall then manufacture other sexual organs, which sexual organs shall produce the eggs. And the cycle shall continue. So, what you have here are some of the examples of tapeworms. Number one, have what they call Tamia sardinata. This is the beef tapeworm. The beef tapeworm. Then, Tamia solium. This is the pork tapeworm. The pork tapeworm. And this can seem to be a very hazardous uh, parasite because it can cause brain damage. Very damaged, it can damage the spinal cord, it can damage the spinal cord, then it can also damage our liver, it can damage the muscles, it can damage the eyes, and its effects are very rotten if the intermediate ones, which is where a pig is skipped. Then you have ligula in the cyanidis, this is found in birds. The buds are the final host, the final host, and the, the buds get this from fish. Eh? So it is very common in buds that eat fish, and the intermediate host they have to more, they have it has more than one host. So the bud is the final host, the fish is really the intermediate host, but also the fish gets it from copper pods, copper pods. So we shall see copper pods later in arthropods. Then the tear is 
the type the type of aquam that is found in fish. So after having looked at the cestodes, next we proceed to the last class, which is class Trema Toda. Trema Toda. So under Trema Toda, we have what they call the flukes. Flukes. So there are different types of flukes: the blood fluke, the liver fluke, and the likes. So these trematodes also have a syncytial tegument. They are also parasitic. Also parasitic. They have more than one host. More than one host. Then they have two suckers. Two suckers. The number one they have what they call the orosaka. The orosaka. And number two they have what they call the ventral sucker. The ventral sucker. Or what some things we call the acetabulum. Then on top of that, we say they have different types of larvae. They have different types of larvae, which we are going to be seeing. Um, we should, before we venture into anything, we should look at the life cycle of the general life cycle of any tremor. So, but there are always exceptions, as we are going to be seeing. So, these ones also usually have their final host as a butter bread. So. If we have first lot of feces, and these feces contain eggs, contain eggs, and these eggs are already fatter, like so, especially near water sources, near water sources. So these eggs shall go into the water source where they will hatch, they will hatch to form a type of larvae called the marucidia. Maricidia. So the role of this Maricidia is to swim and look for a Molluscan host. And the Molluscan host is usually a snail. Okay? Snail. So within the snail, this Maricidia shall enter, then they grow to form another type of larvae called the sporocyst. The sporocyst. After I forgot none of the characteristics, these organisms can form cysts. Cysts. A cyst, the role of a cyst is just for protection. For a cyst. The role of this sporocyst to undergo a sexual reef production to form more sporocysts. To form more sporocysts, and it shall form another type of larvae called the radiae. The radiae. So then the radiae, still within the molluscan host, shall undergo a sexual reproduction to form more radiae. More radiae, and it shall form another type of larvae called the Sakari. 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 Then this Sakari is motile. It's motile because it has a tail. And the role of the Sakari, it will leave the molluscan host and look for another host, which is usually fish, for example, fish. Then within the fish, it shall multiply to form a Sakari and to look, after some time, it will lose the tail and become lazy, motile or non motile to form another type of larvae called the beta saccharine. Beta saccharine. And this beta saccharine is the one that will form a cyst within the fish. So that in case there is eating of half cooked fish, half cooked fish, half cooked fish. fish have cooked fish, this, this metasacari shall be taken in and it will be the one to form a new fluke. Form a new fluke. So just to summarize the whole cycle, we say we begin with eggs. Then the eggs shall have to form what we call the Miracidia. Then the Miracidia shall form the sporocyst. Then the sporocyst shall form what you call the radiate. Then the radiate shall form the saccharia. Then the saccharia shall form the metasaccharia. Then the metasaccharia shall form a mature fluke. Then the fluke shall lay more eggs and the cycle continues. So that is basically the life cycle of a. Tremor to, in fact, specifically the 
cholelogenesis, synthesis, of which is known as the liver fluke. Liver fluke. So let's look at now the examples of tremor toads. Number one, you have what they call cholelogenesis, synthesis. So these are the examples of tremor toads. We say cholelogenesis, synthesis, and this is what they call the bloody fluke. Bloody fluke. Cut. Cut.